Okay, go. Hello, Canadians and Americans. This is my friend Emily Eagleson from Hi. my Bible study with Brock Christian Fellowship. She's going to share with you a little bit of her testimony and how she, how Christ was in her life or her walk with Jesus through high school. So I hope you enjoy. She's awesome. Okay. Um, so basically I was born and raised a Christian. So my family grew us up in the church. So we went to church every Sunday. I went to a Christian elementary school and a Christian high school as well. So I was just raised in that environment. Oh no. Okay. okay. And um, I guess for a while, like after high school, I kind of got up, caught up in like more of the partying and drinking kind of phase and left God for a while. So um, yeah, it was basically, it wasn't, I felt like I was being put in like a bubble, like a Christian bubble and I really needed to get out of it because I guess at the time I didn't really realize um, how to have a personal relationship with God and it was more I was doing it out of custom and because my parents wanted me to and because my friends, most of them were. But um, yeah, after high school I went to a secular co college and yeah, I got caught up in that. And not so much the first couple of years because I lived at home so that kind of helped a lot. But um, then I went to Brock and first and second year I lived in a house with a couple guys and a couple girls that weren't Christians at all. And I began drinking every weekend and partying with them. Um, it wasn't a great time of my life, let's put it that way. Also, like it was fun for first year and fun part of second year, but at the same time it didn't like, I always felt kind of guilty about it because I knew that, I don't know, God was nagging me and he's always kind of there even though I didn't want him there at the time. And um, I guess, um, yeah, it was just like, at one point last year, I had a subletter living in our house that was um, harassing me, and it was just a very dark time of my life. And um, yeah, it, that's one of those experiences that doesn't happen to very often or to anyone, and it's hopefully no one will have to experience that. But um, it got me thinking a lot about my faith and where I was at and what I was doing with my life. And so I even took to the extremes of reading the entire Bible cover to cover and yeah, still didn't get much from it. And that sounds bad because like I read the entire Bible, like I should be getting something out of it. But I think I read it mostly for the wrong reasons. It was more I read it so that like answers would pop out of my face instead of reading it and like really searching out God. I was still like living not a Christian lifestyle at all. And that's what... Um, wasn't good. <laughs> I don't know. And then anyways, um, after I got my roommate evicted, um, I had another roommate move in who was a lesbian and she was interesting to <laughs> be, become a friend with too because she had um, really different views obviously than what our views are and she'd want to know my views because I was pretty open about it and I started going to Bible studies last year. And so I'd tell her what I thought about different things, and I wouldn't lie to her, like, I'm obviously going to tell her the truth. And we became good friends, and we're still friends to this day. And I guess after, um, after that, my landlord decided to sell our house, so I kind of had to move out and um, find a different place to live. And I was looking for different houses, like secular houses again, still with a friend, but... Um, None of them really worked out, and then I got an email from Brock Christian Fellowship, and they said this house had one spot left, and like, the girl that had a lease here was not going to be here for the year, so I emailed her and I was like, hey, I want this house, <laughs> like, I think it'll help for sure, and like, um, this house has helped a lot, like, I, a lot, a lot, just living with other Christians and seeing their perspectives on things, and especially, um, because I made the conscious decision in the summer to kind of turn my life around and stop living the way I was beforehand and yeah it's been a huge it's been so much better and like at first I did miss the partying lifestyle and it, to be completely honest with you because it is it was fun at the time but at the same time 
It really, and looking back in retrospect, it really wasn't because half the time you were like sick and like your head hurt and then it was not a good time. And um, just the people too, like as much as like I'm still friends with all, all of, yeah, all of those people that I was friends with before, but they understand now that I'm not going to be getting drunk all the time that I'm with them and it's just not fun for me anymore. And so I, yeah, it, it's been a huge change, but now I'm back on track, and like, uh, no one's perfect, obviously we're still gonna fall every once in a while, but it's, yeah, it's a lot better now, what else should I say? <laughs> um, was there any point in high school where there was something that kept you from giving in to the peer pressure? Mm, not really, like I think it was mostly because my friends at the time didn't really do anything, like, no, they didn't, like, do drugs or drink or anything like mm -hmm. that, and then also, um, well, I lived at home, so, like, yeah. I'd go home, and, like, obviously, I didn't have a car or anything, so I couldn't, like, escape or go anywhere and do anything yeah. bad, but, like, no, I didn't, I wasn't really, yeah, rebellious in high school. I did, um, do an exchange to Quebec when I was in high school for a couple months, and then there, I... <laughs> I, um, I guess, like, I drank for the first time and got, like, a buzz, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what is this? But then I was kind of, and then I, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at the time, and I kind yeah. of liked it, and I kind of wanted, and then, like, I told my friends back home, and they're just like, oh, it's so cool, and it's like, what? Like, drinking's the cool thing to do? Okay. And then, yeah, and then that's kind of a push towards that lifestyle, but I never really got into high school at all. Just that one time, but... Yeah. Um, looking back on the experience uh, and like where where you are now with God and with your walk, like what would you like? What is your realization, or what's like? What? How do you see God worked in your life then, or is there like a favorite Bible verse or something that you just you know about God that has just really impacted your heart now? Mm -hmm. Um, well, Bible verse that stood out to me for a long time was Philippians 2, like the entire Philippians 2, <laughs> like so I don't have memorized, but like it's basically saying to shine like stars in a crooked and depraved generation. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, shine like stars. And just to, like, I wasn't, and I always thought about that during that time of my life, and it's just like, oh, I'm definitely not doing that, and yeah. I don't want to at the same time either, and so... Yeah, and so I got it tattooed on my shoulder, and then, um, so now it's a constant reminder to yeah. be an example for God, or like for just be an example and like kind of set yourself apart from it, because it's not a good lifestyle, like it's not, a, it seems glamorous and fun, but it, yeah, it's not worth it, it's yeah. definitely not. It's cool yeah. how it says like shine. Uh, in the crooked and the universe, because in Ecclesiastes it says that no one can make straight what he's made crooked. Mm -hmm, so yeah. it's kind of like I never thought that. that's cool. Okay. I don't know. That's just I don't know. I just connected to that, and it's just like, huh, interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like he had a total purpose, and like now you're still in those girls' lives. Like they're still you're still friends with them. Yeah. So, and the thing is too, like this year, like this September, like when I moved to this house, I had emailed them all, like well to my closest friends here, and I told them, and I was like, I'm not happy doing this, and I'm not, like, living the way I want to be living by drinking with you guys every weekend, because we would go out once or twice a week, like, it was a lot, <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then they just responded back, and they're just like, oh, we still love you, like, we're not gonna turn you away just because you don't want to, like, hang out with us, well, not, like, hang out with us, but, like, party with us anymore, yeah. and that kind of stuff, and they were just like, we're not, we obviously accept you for who you are, and we know that you're a Christian, so it's like, yeah, it was a huge, it was, I wasn't really expecting that, to be honest with you, I was more expecting to be, like, isolated from everyone, and that's what I wasn't happy or, like, looking forward to, obviously, mm -hmm. but it was surprising, but it was a good surprise, like, it was, I don't know, it was really good, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. My, my favorite part about what you'd said is that God was kind of always in the back nagging yeah, you. Yeah, it was annoying. <laughs> Like, you can't get rid of the presence no, of God in your life? No, I couldn't, and like, it, cause like, I, like, I don't know, I'd go out and do something, or like, 
for example, like, I've tried drugs a couple times, and it just, like, every time, like, after that, I'd be like, oh, oh, <laughs> like, I don't know, and then, like, I'd think about it.